There are many, many challenges as we move towards the new radio or NR standard in 5G. Number one, we've just added a number of new frequency bands. There are already over 50 that are specified by 3GPP just for LTE, which means that every device has to operate in multiple bands in order to be transportable around the world and function the way that it should in this global society. Well, we just added more uh, with 3GPP specifying more bands for NR below 6 gigahertz between 3.5 and 6 uh, plus the new bands that have been opened up uh, specifically now in the United States with the FCC's uh, report and order in the 28, 37, and 39 gigahertz territory and then just a couple weeks ago in the uh, 24 and 47 gigahertz areas. So now we have even more bands to try to get devices to work across multiple bands and that means more test and measurement, that means uh, more complex designs, more interaction issues, and a significant challenge associated with just having to deal with a fragmented set of spectrum in which you need to operate. Among those new bands that are added is a part of what drives the second major challenge that I talk about, and that is making measurements over the air. And as we move to millimeter wave frequencies, all of this territory from 24 up to maybe as high as 52 gigahertz uh, for mobile communications, the level of integration that is necessary to get these to work properly is going to require uh, the elimination of cables and connectors for making even calibrated measurements on the subsystems and uh, the integrated systems. And so making calibrated measurements over the air is very feasible. We do this all the time now, but it's very expensive, it's very time consuming, and it requires a tremendous amount of expertise. So the move to all of this integration at a grander scale is going to force us to figure out how to make those heretofore expensive and esoteric measurements much more pedestrian, much easier to make, much less expensive, and still retain the accuracy necessary to guarantee the performance of the system. And the last major challenge is the interaction between the new radio and the uh, legacy LTE system, where now I have, uh, especially in the most, uh, the standard that will be adopted next week is a non-standalone situation where the mobile device or the user equipment or whatever you want to call it has to maintain a link with two different radio access networks. The traditional LTE network, the 4G network, and now the new 5G NR radio access network. And in particular, maintaining an uplink with both of those, either simultaneously or in some kind of a time-switched element, requires a complicated set of uh, choreography, if you will, and also work that's going to require testing to ensure that one does not interfere with the other. Uh, for example, we're not necessarily talking about a millimeter wave RAN at 5G NR. We're talking about a sub-6 gigahertz RAN at 5G NR, which may cause even simple things like intermodulation distortion problems with existing LTE spectrum based on the proximity of the bands. So those are just three examples of where the challenges exist and uh, for uh, the work that we have to do to make the industry successful and ensure that the measurements can be made and the validation can be done to give people the confidence that their designs are doing what they expected.